Hey, buddies. Welcome to a new podcast episode. I probably shouldn't say new because that makes it sound like I've not done one before, but I have. So welcome to the podcast again. Arr. I don't know what that was. That was actually really embarrassing. I've just got a message saying that my uh, computer is low on storage space. How do I fix that? How can I gain more? Can I download it like I did my RAM? Uh -huh. um, so yeah, this is another one. Um, it has obviously been a while, like all the time when I do these, it's always been a while because I'm incredibly lazy. <clears throat> Oh, it turns out it might have something to do with my 41 gigabyte TF2 installation. Hmm, I might have to rectify this ASAP. Anyway, so, yeah. This is the podcast. Um, I apologies, it hasn't been um, very quick in terms of the turnaround of things but you know who cares it's uh i've got lots of stuff to do i'm lying i don't really i have three gigabytes of tga screenshot files what the shit let me get rid of all these that will do it i probably should have done this before i start the podcast but when i press record it then came up with a message saying that i need to um do this so oh well anyway um back to the topic at hand so yeah this is gonna have multiple different things on topics which will be video games esports technology stuff amazing i know um so to get started i'll just talk about the video games that i've been playing just in case any of you find this really interesting um if you do find this interesting then wow that's pretty cool um Thank you for some reason reading this. Reading? Watching. Watching? Listening. There we go. Um. Anyway. So, yeah. I've been playing Dota 2 a lot. I seem to have caught a Dota bug uh, because I've managed to jump from 3.5k to 4k of Dota, which is a pretty decent achievement, I, dem I, I guess. It's nothing too amazing, but you know, it, it's still good. Anyway, I feel anyway. So yeah, that's um, what I've been incredibly preoccupied with. Um, just wasting lots and lots of time um, playing Dota. It's not necessarily a good thing because I waste a lot of time doing it, like an insane amount of time doing it. Um, it, it It is a very, very time consuming video game to play and for some reason I play it a ridiculous amount um, especially recently which is not a good thing so I really need to um, try and rein, rein that all in because it's not um, it's not a good addiction to have because obviously if you play a game of Dota it could last an hour or it could last 20 minutes and you don't know when you go into it and at the end of it, if you lose and you played an hour, you feel nothing but disappointment, regret and sadness. So yeah. But I'll probably still continue to play it for ages and ages and ages and ages. Even though I don't want to. I just can't let go. It's like, it is like a drug. It's like heroin. I think. I don't know. I've never done heroin. So if you're a heroin addict, if you can confirm or deny whether or not it's like heroin, that'd be brilliant. Um... Other games, well, I've been recently playing over the past few days is Path of Exile. I don't know why I'm continuing to play that game um, or why I go back into it every so often, but I think it's because I enjoyed Diablo 3 quite a bit that I sort of think, uh, I can play Path of Exile. It's, uh, it's a similar game, you know, it's a pretty good game. Surely I can play that game. You'll be alright. And it turns out that it's incredibly, well, it's kind of overly complicated. Um, you can do many things wrong. And apparently my builds are like the shit. Uh, 
<laughs> when I streamed it, loads of people were getting like quite um try eh, quite triggered at my build, and I don't. I was just like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm. Ju I just. I just level up and then I, I press something and it gives me like more something and I think wow that's pretty good you know I'm, I, I go around I, I kill people uh, or things they die so how am I doing anything wrong if I'm going through and breezing through it all and people aren't dying then what, then what? and apparently it's like you have to be level 60 to get to like the good stuff and it's just like well why why can't they just make the beginning good as well, you know? Is that is that hard? When I played Diablo 3, I'd never played a game like that before, and I found it okay. I find it quite enjoyable to play. Um, finding loot is pretty good, understandable, and um, easily to differentiate from each other. Um, you know, it's a bit more satisfying, I guess, in Diablo, because you've got gold and having and hearing the sound of the gold being picked up is quite a nice sound you know it's quite a satisfying thing to happen it's like oh i've just got some more gold from walking over it wonderful you know things like that and uh you know it's, it's it just seems to be quite a lot of polish i don't like the story i think the story's shit i guess the gameplay can get quite boring i do find that um well i found that i hit like a limit where i don't give a shit anymore and nothing really different's happening and I don't want to continue with it um, which seems to be the norm apparently with Diablo 3 but with Path of Exile I just I want to like it I like the visuals I like the um, multiple different settings it seems to be um, like the levels have a lot more character to it a lot more variation um, Diablo 3 kind of gave me this impression that like Everything was a bit samey. I know there were different locations and everything, but um, the the color tone was very similar to each location. It was quite um, sort of misty and dreary in all these locations, which I guess is fine, but I think you do kind of get a bit bored of it. Um, whereas in Path of Exile, there are, you know, you know like swamps, uh, desert wastelands and like I think there was one where I was like in a I don't know there just seemed to be blood everywhere you know all, all dripping down the walls was like oh crike crikey this isn't a location that I want to stay in there's blood everywhere I'm running on blood whose blood is this where did all this blood come from I can't see the uh, origin of any of this blood but there's just blood here there and everywhere get me out of here I think I don't know I don't know what this blood's for. Maybe it's, you know, just a, a big puddle of blood that's for the, uh, you know, t for donations for, like, little kids that are dying. Or maybe it's just, you know, blood of victims that I can't see. And uh, I guess that was actually confirmed when I walked past loads of corpses as well. So maybe, yeah. Now that I think about it, that's probably what it is. Hmm. Yeah. That makes, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, okay. Now, yeah, the it turns out if you put more thought into things, it makes more sense, and maybe that's what I should have done. So, the, so there is, I guess, uh, more of a point. I think it's just a story, maybe. I don't know. I found, like, if I wanted to follow the story, I had to click on things, and then it gave me, like, this scrolling box that I had to read, but there was also a voiceover, but when I walked away from the scrolling box, the voiceover stopped, which I don't really like because I'm not going to stand there and break up my gameplay just to read something. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, and the game doesn't explain anything to you. I guess people would be like, oh, man, you're so shit. You should really just, just, just go in the forums and just learn. The game's, the game's not for noobs. You have to, you know, discover this yourself. It's like, fuck off, should I? Like, that's just lazy, you know? I just feel like that's really, really kind of like a lame and lazy way of putting stuff in, you know? I didn't, I don't know. I I, I kind of feel like, as a player, I'm, should, can I not just like discover this stuff, you know? Should it not just sort of go, hey, 
just to let you know you're not in the optimal or you're not building your character optimally. I know that's, you know, you don't want to be, you know, have your hand held, but you kind of don't want to be drifting off into a position where you're going to be completely shit. Uh, apparently I've got enough disk space for 32 minutes of recording. Oh, really? I just deleted load of, did I empty the risk? I don't think I emptied the recycle bin. Ooh, that's a schoolboy error. Uh, I know this is what people really, really wanted to uh, listen to. This is a part of the podcast experience um, where I come to terms with my computer's recycle bin. I have to search for my recycle bin. Why is it not on my desktop? What the fuck? What if I've deleted my recycle bin? Storage. Uh, I don't. I can't find my recycle bin. Is there a recycle bin on Windows Ten? Sort by name. It is sorted by name. Is it still called a recycle bin? I don't know. What if I? You show show desktop icons. I'm looking at my desktop. There it is. All right. Oh shit! You know when you don't really manage your PC that much, and you just sort of like let it let it go. It's like um, if you don't really get a haircut, you know, it just starts getting into a mess. And that's what my PC's doing at the moment uh, because I've just neglected it. Um, <coughs> I think that happens when you get an SSD and you don't have to defragment anything and when you don't really have to worry about storage for ages and then you suddenly have to and then you get a message saying your computer's full and you're like <laughs> what? My <laughs> it <laughs> it can get what now? What the fuck? Um, and then you have to go through stuff and delete stuff and because you're not really used to it you're like do I really want to delete that though I might need I might need that video game that I've only played once for the past two years so it's a bit of a bizarre concept maybe it just means I think it's also because previously if I've run out of storage I just buy another uh, SSD and then it's sort of to the point where do I really have to buy another one you know is that is that something I should continue doing, uh, or should I just learn to manage my shit? Apparently, I don't manage my shit anyway. Um, so yeah, that was the thing. Path of Exile, it was all right, uh, and I've I, I will still try and give it a go further and further, and hopefully, maybe it will just click, and I'll just be like, "Wow, oh shit, son!" So this is how it's done. Um, if that ever happens. Um, who knows? TF2, still TF2, still playing video games in a team. We're in high because uh, poor choices were made on the preseason, uh, <clears throat> and there wasn't really much gel in the team. Um, so we didn't make prem, but we're in high. We're winning high at the moment. We haven't lost a game. We're doing well in PCWs as well. Um, so yeah, uh, I just I just like playing the game. I think it's sort of when I'm I've been playing more and more over. Um, let me think. Yeah, I've just it's, there's like been many points when I just sort of sit there and I just go, you know what? I really really enjoy playing. I'm having lots and lots of fun. You know, um, so there are those points where it's like, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah, this is fine. You know, there there are points when I think maybe I should not play the game anymore. Um, maybe I should try and do something else. But it's just, I don't know. I just sit there and I just think, wow, I just enjoy it a lot. So there's no point. <coughs> Ultimately, but never mind. <coughs> so I've got a bit of a 
bit of flegem in uh, my throat. So yeah, we um, I'm having lots of fun on the team. Hello, kitty ninjas. <coughs> we get our own personalized avatars with a a kitty ninja on it, and it's pretty cool. We look all kind of baller. Um, so yeah, it's we, we're all we, we look fly. I believe the kids call it. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much really to talk about in TF2. Um, yeah, everything's just going on and it's good. I still like playing the game. I don't really care about Valve and their involvement in competitive TF2 because it's, yeah, it's just pointless just thinking about it because at the end of the day if they get involved brilliant but there's a point where we just have to just sort of play the game that we enjoy and I don't feel like we should be playing or changing the game so then Valve will notice us one day and give us like a massive prize pool and suck our dicks um, but yeah it's <coughs> I find it pointless in all honesty um the next things on the agenda is esports. Um, <clears throat> it's mainly CS:GO because it's the only thing that I really follow, um, and Dota 2. But there's not really much in Dota 2. Um, in CS:GO news, teams have been changed, um, where let me think. Oh, they got. Oh yeah, Phase Nico has left ML Sports. Um, and it was like, well, after the E-League major, Chris J got removed. They brought in Oscar again, who got removed like six months before that for some reason. It was like a mysterious reason. Um, and yeah, so Chris J got removed. Oscar came back and now Nico's leaving to join FaZe um, because AZ has left FaZe to join North and... Rabinio left North because he was not enjoying it. Um, and it's all pretty good, to be honest. Those are all good changes. I'm glad Nico's left Mouse Sports because they're a shit team and they're constantly held down by dead weight. And Nico's like really, really good. And I think he'll be absolutely amazing in FaZe. And I think that they could be really good now because FaZe did well at E League, I guess. Um, with Carrigan, they're doing a lot better as a team. And I feel with another star player that they can depend on consistently. And someone that was also in-game leading for Mouse as well at many points. You know, he was sort of like um, calling the shots um, sometimes. So, you know, they have lots of experience behind it. So it's looking good for them. Um, with North getting easy, they'll probably get a player who actually wants to play and improve and doesn't feel like he's dragging the team down um so yeah that's also really 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 good um so that's a good change for them because they did pretty bad at e-league considering their previous results that had all been um experiencing or whatever is the better word to sort of really use um I don't think there's really anything amazing that needs to be mentioned. Australis are still just doing really good after the E-League Major. They seem to be... I feel like they'll probably be quite dominant now because they've made... They finally hit it. They hit the goal of winning a Major. They, they can now relax. Um, they won't have the constant looming of do not choke on the of the dick of pressure. So, yeah, that will be quite good. There's obviously been the Fnatic changes where they uh, Fnatic and Godsent have swapped players over and all that bollocks. No one cares. Basically, all Fnatic is back um, and they'll probably won't be brilliant, I feel. Um, I think there's the French super team, which is G2, um, which was... Uh, what was it? Shocks. Kenny S. Smiths is coaching. Apex isn't 
Scream's joining now because he was meant to go to FaZe. And MBK, yeah. So they're in the G2 Super Team. Um, and basically the remnants of that have, have gone to Envious. Uh, so to be honest, it's a French... The French Shuffle, they've all been pretty bad for a while, never really reaching their potential, so who knows whether or not this one does, no one cares. Uh, one thing that was a surprise was um, in, in his shuffles is uh, Hiko leaving Liquid and Stanislav leaving Optic to join Liquid, which is weird, I feel, because Hiko seems like a, a Liquid boy. Um, but yeah, he's just left and joined to Optic, and it's like, I don't know if that's going to be a good fit. Um, Stanislav was like a good in-game leader for um, Optic and now he's gone to Liquid and what was it Liquid no, Optic have gained Peacemaker as coach he used to coach Immortals and was doing really well with them and yeah so that might be might be why they might be trying to shape someone into being an in-game leader but who knows if that will work out that seems a bit um, a bit of a question mark for me um Especially from Optic, I, I I read the statement from Stanislav, but I can't remember what the... I think it was because he felt that Optic weren't necessarily like a... Um, I, th I think he wanted like more player management kind of thing, like more of a serious environment, um, whereas it sort of feels like uh, maybe he sort of felt like it was a bit of a you know just hey buddies and friends he didn't really have a problem with with everything but he wanted a little bit more structure so you know coaching analysts so i would imagine maybe like how astralis have because astralis even have like a, a sports psychologist woman uh because they choked so much so maybe he just wanted a little bit more professionalism in some ways um and i guess like when you join an org that buys a fucking mansion for you to all play video games in I guess it's kind of hard for you to really make it and take it as seriously as you should and you maybe feel a little bit too relaxed. Um, and I guess that's probably why, you know, you don't find football teams buying mansions for their players and just fitting them all in and, uh, you know, they, they make them go to training grounds where they've got loads of people around them that can make them focus on the game and do better. But I can't remember what the contents was of the statement, so it might be a load of bollocks. Um, I think it's pretty much for CSGO. Um, Technology-wise, well, well, I say technology, hardware-wise, I'm reviewing the ExtraFi, if that's what it's called, K2 keyboard. It's a load of... Well, it's not a load of shit, but it's not... I don't know, it's so expensive and you don't really get anything. It's so mediocre, it's insane. Watch out for that review. Um, coming soon trademark um, I reviewed the uh, Cougar Minos mouse which is up which is a, a cheap mouse that shit um, <clears throat> and the next mouse I want to review is the final mouse screen one but I might have to do one of those donation things on stream where I ask for a half um because i haven't been plugging my patreon as much not many people have been on it but i might shut it down if i'm honest until i start doing it more frequently and <clears throat> it's because it's 80 pounds which is why which is fucking ridiculous 80 fucking quid 80 what the fuck am i buying it like what 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 am i buying like what where is all this money going into like what the absolute fucking t fuck um like the G403 I got is £60. That's how much I paid for G403, which is sick. Uh, the G Pro, I believe, is like... Yeah, the G, the G Pro is fucking 56 quid. Really? Is there other shops? Because it's like when you type it into Google, it's just... It's a bit weird. Let me see what... They, they want 70 quid so the G Pro is 70 quid which is from um, Logitech obviously so you're you're getting you're going to be getting something pretty good you know they put a lot of I mean that's asking a lot but 
I feel from using their mice, like with all their sensors in it and everything, there's obviously going to be a few mishaps like with build quality. There's going to be little niggling personal preference uh, and stuff, but you kind of feel like you're getting your money's worth in some ways. You're, you're paying for the R&D that went into it and, you know, it's a quality mouse, but I'm paying 80 quid for a mouse that's in like a a shell that you can get from is it Alibaba or something like that? You know the it's just like a standard shell, like it's not even something that they designed and made. It's just literally a standard shell with a sensor in it and stuff. It's like what the fuck? And this was meant to come out last year. It was meant to come out a year ago. I mean, they had like an advertisement in the Columbus Major and CSGO, and it's been a year. And it's like, I'm pretty sure it's only been available in Europe for like the past month or two. It's like, holy fuck, 80 fucking pounds. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to, but if I review it, it's going to have a lot of shit. Like, not just reviewing the mouse, but I think I'll probably also be like, yo, let's go through some of the history behind this mouse and a catalogue of all the bullshit that they pretty much went through you know in terms of um saying it was a month away saying that it was a week away saying that shipments will be big uh, will begin soon and all this bollocks you know it's it is going to be juicy i will admit it really is it i'd have to do a lot of research for it which is why i've i've started to gain or sorry start again I started to do a little bit of research um, now, taking screenshots of all the things that they've said and all this rubbish. Um, so when I do it in a review, I'll have everything kind of ready. It's just that it's really, really, really difficult because it takes so much time. It's insane. Like, it's just so bullshit. Um, anyway, so... The other thing that I I don't know if this came out when I did the last podcast, but there is some new mice coming out from Rocket, which feature quote unquote owl eye optical sensor. Um, and they say, meet the bar raising new optical technology. Owl eye is the exciting new optical sensor from Pixar, modified to high and exacting standards of Rock, Rocket. Uh, taking its inspiration from the natural world, it boasts a real responsive feeling that's instantly recognizable. What you recognise is a lethal sensor that simply feels more alive, translating your mouse movements on screen with the unrelenting accuracy and consistency. Our eye provides you with a level of control that feels natural and innate, bridging a gap between you and your name, your game. Sorry. Uh, oh, this is a lot of bollocks. As apex predators, uh, actually, let me just make sure that is it. It is. Hold on. Okay, so something that is interesting is that they said that most people use um, under 2000 DPI. So what they've made is, is from the, they focus on responsiveness between 400 and 3000 DPI. Um, it can go above that, but they, they said that they really focused on the lower uh, DPI. Although it's a bit weird. It says most common DPI settings. There's like a shit graph. Not shit. Anyway, um, one of the things is inspired by nature, engineered by Rockat. As apex predators, owls are feared by their prey. What makes them so deadly is their legendary eyesight, which is what inspired Rockat when working on the owl eye sensor. Their vision is characterized by the stunning ability to rapidly analyze processes surroundings with lethal efficiency. Owl eye mirrors this relentless position, providing games with that with what feels like a natural extension of their body for a unique, real feeling experience that's as intuitive as it is effective. What a load of fucking bollocks that is. Someone got paid for this. They actually sort of sat there and went, this is fucking brilliant, mate. This is possibly the best marketing campaign that we could have come up with. This does not sound like a fucking joke in any way. And it's just like, holy shit, they think this is good. 
It might be a fantastic mouse, but I am never going to forget the bullshit that is spouted from that ever. It, it can't be forgotten. That is on that is top tier bullshit. If this mouse is shit, this is just going to make it even more hilarious. So they better be fucking confident that it's going to be good because if not, having this bullshit and a shit mouse is just a too much shit for me to deal with. Anyway, um, the remaining thing, um, blog. My my TF2 blog is making a comeback. I'm working on an article as we speak. Um, finishing off my process series on how to attack a defense second and lasts. And then I'll probably move on to Snake Water Middle and look at some other parts of Snake Water as well. Um, reviews I've already mentioned and covered. Videos I'm thinking about doing some videos about competitive TF2, like discussions about it, and also discussions about unlocks and stuff like that in general. But that leads me on to my next topic, which is motivation and how little I have. Like I'm so lazy, it's unreal. And it's just kind of difficult to really get the motivation to do more and um, put more effort into shit. It's kind of, um, yeah, I, I feel like everybody's obviously been in this situation, but it's like, I just can't fucking get out of it. I just need to do this stuff because it would be good content, but there'll be a point when I will work on it and actually try. And then I think, nah, this is shit. I'm not going to bother. Like the amount of times that I've done podcasts and just stopped recording and just scrapped it all is is insane. If I did it more consistently, I'd probably um, <clears throat> be doing a lot better for myself. You know, I'd have like a good flow of content, lots of people, fans, money. But it's just like I seem to be hindered by my own laziness, and it's frustrating sometimes. Uh, it really is. But I would try and prevail. You know, try being the uh, keyword. So, yep, that's it for, for this podcast. I'm going to go back onto my article of Team Fortress 2 um, and try and crack on with this review. But it's really difficult to review a keyboard when it's incredibly mediocre. I could literally just take everything that I've said from a previous review and just change the name. Because there is no difference between... Well, actually, this is just incredibly more generic than others. Um, but yeah, I won't go into this because this is what a review is for. This is a podcast. They're separate things. Anyway, if you have been listening until the very end of this, thank you so much. It, I really, 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 really appreciate it if you are listening till the very end. It's really cool. Anyway, goodbye. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week. Toodle.